All right, welcome aboard. Um, today I want to make a quick video um, on the uh, on the 50-70 rule. Uh, before we get into that though, I want to apologize for my lack of videos lately. Um, it's been a couple of reasons for that actually. Um, one, we're, we're right in the middle of winter here in Colorado and uh, as I've mentioned in some of my other videos, sometimes that's, that's not the best time to fly a small aircraft. Um, the winds aloft in the mountains uh, are typically higher than in the summer months. Um, this type of year, you really have to worry about icing almost at, at all altitudes. Um, so a couple of uh, weather-related items have kept me grounded. Um, unfortunately, I've also had a couple of maintenance-related items that have kept me on the ground. Um, I was on a flight back from Aspen to Longmont and, uh, and I had a tack failure. So my tachometer um, went berserk and, uh, and it tore up my, um, my tack cable and the tachometer itself. Um, and, uh, and maybe I'll include a, a quick snippet of that um, for your viewing pleasure. So as you could tell, that was a pretty, uh, pretty nasty noise, and uh, and thankfully I was close enough to home that uh, that I was able to land um, at Longmont safely and tuck the plane in. Uh, I know the airplane well enough to know that the engine sounded fine; uh, it was making the appropriate RPMs. I also have my uh, manifold pressure gauge that was reading fine, so I I, I was able to finish the flight um, and and land safely in Longmont. Unfortunately, though. Um, a tachometer is a required item for flight, and, uh, and so I've been grounded um, since I landed. Uh, the tack I've ordered to replace it is, uh, is back ordered right now, and I probably won't have it for another week or two. So um, in an effort to, to make use of this downtime, uh, I've scheduled my annual to take place um, starting next week. Uh, the week after that, I'm actually doing a prop overhaul as well. Um, it's been 14 years since I've had my prop overhauled, and um, the engine only has about 800 hours um, since, or the, the prop only has about 800 hours, I should say, on it since, uh, since overhaul, but 14 years. So given the terrain that I fly over, um, you know, I, I, I would feel more comfortable, you know, doing that. So um, that kind of brings you up to speed on, on why you haven't seen a whole lot of videos from me, um, but uh, hopefully you know, in, in the next uh, few weeks, we'll have all of this behind us and, uh, and we'll be back to, to flying in the air. So uh, to make use of the, uh, the downtime, I wanted to talk to you all today about the 50-70 rule. And, uh, and I'll preface all of this by saying, again, I am not a CFI. I'm simply sharing um, rules that work for me, uh, sharing my experiences with you, um, you know, to, to hopefully incorporate into your, your bag of tricks. So. The 50-70 rule, for those who, who don't know what this is, um, is, is really a rule to determine whether or not you um, continue a takeoff or you abort a takeoff. And it really comes into play um, under three conditions. So uh, for me, it's hot conditions, high conditions, or uh, a short runway. You know, those are, are sort of the magic three. And as you start mixing those, um, it becomes even more important. So. Uh, you can look at um, the the 5070 rule as, as, as similar to the decision speed or V1 that um, you know a uh, commercial pilot maybe uh, operates under. I you know I don't calculate V1. I don't have a V2. You know I'm not a multi-engine plane. So um, I, the 5070 rule has, has served me just fine, and uh, and I'll continue to use it um, for for all my takeoffs under those conditions. So. Um, what it is, um, is a rule that within the first 50% of the runway, so let's say you have a runway that's 4,400 feet long, by the 2,200 foot mark, you better be 70% of your takeoff speed. So you might ask yourself, well, why, why wouldn't 50%? I'd be at 50%. The problem is, the faster you go, um, the more runway you start gobbling up. Um, and the shorter the time frame is uh, remaining. So a good example is Glenwood Springs. I actually timed my takeoff out of Glenwood Springs. Um, and in the first 50% of the runway, it took me 24 seconds to get to the halfway point. 
it only took me about 12 to 13 seconds to go from the halfway point to the end of the runway. So you can see that things start happening a lot faster. You start chewing up a lot more runway the faster you go. Um, so the rule of, of thumb is uh, be at 70% at of your takeoff speed by 50% of the runway. I'm a little bit more conservative than that. Um, just the way that my airspeed is read in the Mooney, it's in miles an hour. Um, and uh, 60 is a nice even number for me. Um, I use 60 miles an hour as sort of my 80% checkpoint. And if I'm not at 60 by the halfway mark of a runway, uh, of a, of a runway I'm going to abort my takeoff. So um, how, do you, how do you determine the halfway point of a runway? Well, there, there's a number of ways um, we can do that. Some airports were fortunate enough to actually have a stripe um, painted right down the middle of the runway. Um, Glenwood Springs is a good example of that. Um, others, uh, you know, with foreflight, you can do a two-finger tap on, uh, on a runway diagram and measure a distance. And you can pick something, uh, be it a taxiway or a um, runway marking sign or something like that, that becomes your halfway point. Um, you can also use the runway markers. Many of the larger airports, uh, you know, have thousand-foot markers on, uh, on the runway that you can, um, you can use to your advantage. You can even use Google Maps. Um, you know, if you right click on a Google map, you go into the measure distance and you can stretch a line and determine a, a halfway point for, for a runway. So once you have um, that halfway point, uh, you know, have your mental check that uh, by that point, I'm going to either be at, in my case, 60 miles an hour, or I'm going to abort that takeoff. Um, you know, in theory, you should have calculated your takeoff distance ahead of time, but, but there's all kinds of external factors that can, um, you know, weigh into why you didn't make that speed. You could have, you know, a, a mag failure. You could have um, the runway putting off a lot of heat and it's really messing with your induction system and you're not able to generate the power that you thought you'd be able to. Um, you know, there, there's all kinds of reasons, or maybe you overloaded the plane, uh, you know, you're flying at a heavier weight than, than you thought. So um, I'd encourage you all to incorporate that into, um, into your workflow. So uh, now, um, as I've done in some of my other videos, we'll, uh, we'll go back in time a little bit to Steamboat Springs um, in the middle of summer. I think it was uh, July or August of, of last year that I had um, filmed this video. And, uh, and you'll hear sort of me incorporating the 50-70, or in my case, the 50-80 rule um, into my pre-flight and, uh, and runway call-outs as I'm, as I'm taking off. So, hope you enjoy. All right, welcome back to Steamboat. Density altitude today is gonna be really hot. Uh, as a matter of fact, we'll, uh, or hi, uh, we'll listen to the, uh, to the weather here in a second. So, um, definitely lean for takeoff out of steamboat and um, do your performance checks. For me, my performance check is typically the Alpha Taxiway. So, steamboat's 4,400, I don't have it up in front of me, I think 4,400 feet. Um, the Alpha Taxiway is about 2,000 feet from the, from the 3 2 threshold. So I'm going to taxi out there, do my or do my run up here, go full power, lean it, and then on my takeoff roll, if I don't have 60 miles an hour on my airspeed by the time I hit the Alpha taxiway, I'm going to abort and check things out again. All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and listen to that um, the weather, and we'll see if we get a density altitude. Two thousand temperature two two Celsius dew point. Three altimeter three zero zero six remarks density altitude niner thousand one hundred. All right, niner thousand plus and a four thousand foot runway naturally aspirated Mooney. Now Steamboat just has the two taxiways Alpha and Bravo. Neither of them run all the way to the end of the uh, runway threshold, so we'll just back taxi three two. Steamboat traffic, Mooney, November 7164 uniforms, back taxiing 32 for a uh, west departure at Steamboat. Now, Steamboat has a displaced threshold. I'm going to go taxi all the way down to the very end and use uh, all available runway today.
There's 50. There's 60. We're good. We're going to proceed with the takeoff. 75, and we're rotating, but just before Alpha here today. Gears coming up. So as you could see from that, Steamboat sort of incorporated all three. You know, it was hot, it was high, um, and it was short. So relatively short given the, uh, the conditions we were under. So um, by that uh, Alpha taxiway, I was already, um, you know, at, uh, I, I had already rotated and was climbing away. So I, I had more than enough power um, in the bank and, and more, enough, uh, more than enough reserves uh, for, for my comfort level there. So um, anyway, that's just a quick uh, tip and trick from, from me. And I hope uh, you can incorporate that in your pre-flight and, uh, and, and um, takeoff roll and uh, hopefully, you know, save you from, uh, from making a, uh, you know, from having a bad day. We'll just put it at that. So um, I hope these videos are helpful. I'll keep putting them out again as I have time. And, uh, and in the meantime, fly safe, everyone. Thanks.